Krishna. Prabhuji, a request came up from uh, Kishor Madhav Prabhuji. Yes. Prabhuji is asking that uh, if we can, you know, uh, uh, wind up today's session 30 minutes early. So I don't know. So I'm just uh, directing that same request to you. <laughs> And, and cover up in tomorrow's or uh, next session. Ah, about the festival, Roji, you are telling? Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. Actually, uh, I am also missing, but uh, uh, thing is like the many devotees are there not in India. Not many, I think, some devotees are not in India. So for them, the timings are different. And many are not also in Pune. So it may be difficult for them to adjust. But I think Prashadam is starting at 1.30 only, na? Not only for Prashadam, just to get uh, overall feel. Oh, no, no, I was thinking about Prashadam. No, not, not, not only Prashadam. But thinking about Prashadam and enjoy the overall event. Okay, so that's it. Okay, well, you have to do a That won't be a problem. Yeah, yeah, Darshan, I think will be open whole day, Bruji. No problem. We will miss, I think, Parikrama and some things anyhow. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I think after after one o'clock also it will be available, Bruji. Twelve thirty Darshan is opening. Okay. Yes. So I think uh, we'll start with other others will think what they are discussing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Na? Hope more devotees will join. Let's see. Today is special day. Hare Krishna Mati. Okay. Omagyan Timiranda Sigana and Jana Shalakaya Chakshun Militam and at a smai Shri Gurve Namaha. Namam Vishnupada, a Krishna Prestaya, Bhutale Shimati, Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Nitinamini. Namaste Saraswati Devi, Gauravani Pacharine, Nirvisha Shunnevati, Pasha Tadesh Padine. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityan and the Shri Tavaita Gadadhar, Shiva Shadi Guru Bhakti Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. So welcome all the devotees for uh, the discussion today on Bhagavad Gita. So we are going to start seventh chapter finally <laughs> after a lot of revision. I hope devotees will be happy that finally we are starting on the auspicious Govardhan Puja day. Yeah, and Radha Mataji is saying yes, happy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So last time we were discussing about the background of sixth chapter, and then uh, we discussed a few more things. Okay. So some devotee will like to say because some might not have attended last class and may not be able to hear recording. So somebody want to share what in essence we discussed, not in detail, just in flow or flow or maybe summary what was discussed in the previous session. Yes, bro. Uh, Kishan Madhubu, you want to speak? Uh, no, 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 bro. Actually, what happened, uh, my notes are in another uh, laptop. I'm attending the session from another laptop from office. So I'm not able to refund. Take it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, whatever you remember, you can tell. Uh, memory is very uh, okay. Okay, anybody, anybody can start. Yeah, uh, maybe print. Oh, Yamuna, yeah. last year, Proji. Uh, like I'm reading out from a note, like we discussed about the 10 yes, esoteric yes. Uh, truths, uh, and in that uh, we discussed mm -hmm. about Param Tattva that love Lord is accepted uh, as the supreme personality in all the different sampradayas. And then we also discussed, like, a uh, second was about Sarvas Shakti Man. And mm -hmm. the third was yeah. Akula Rasamrit Sindhu. And the fourth was Vibhin Namsha Tattva and Baddha Jeev. And six, fifth was mm -hmm. Baddha Jeev, sixth was Mukta Jeeva. And Achitya yeah, yeah. Veda Tattva we discussed in the seventh. And then eighth was Shuddha Bhakti. That Bhakti is the only sadhana. And, yeah. and the ninth was Krishna Prapti. That Krishna Prem is uh, the ultimate goal, which we call Prayajana. And then tenth was Anmaya, with that Vedic knowledge is coming in Paramara. So these ten esoteric truths were discussed in the last session. Yeah, these ten we discussed. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Anybody else want to share what we discussed? Yes, Prabhupada. Yes, can I? 
Yes, Mataji. Uh, so, uh, Prabhuji, uh, uh, is, uh, the, in the last session, you have mainly focused on how it is important to study Acharya's commentary to get deeper in our understanding. And a serious student should always go well with Acharya's commentary. The scriptures, uh, reading of the Acharya's commentary needs four points. These are necessity, mood, procedure, and pitfalls. What are the, mm. uh, in four ways we can understand the commentaries. And for that, you have given example of Akshara and Akshara, how Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur, Balde Vidya mm. and Prabhupada give different, different uh, uh, explanation for the same uh, this. Then uh, we uh, uh, discussed 14 points that make uh, commentaries. First of all, uh, it, it is not certainly not word to word meaning. It is not yeah, certainly yeah. not the way one verse is translated and uh, then the Shamula Tattva um, uh, then you focused on Amanaya that uh, Amnaya sorry mm -hmm. that is Vedic Amnaya. knowledge comes in Parampara and uh, what yeah. is the important para pra, Parampara then Sambandha Abhideya and Prayojan that is Shuddha Bhakti is only here then Achinta uh, uh, attain essential truth I am now talking about Param Tattva mm -hmm. Sarva Shaktiman Akhir Akhil Rasat Mukshindu and uh, Vibhinausha Tattva, uh, Baddha Jiva, how Baddha Jiva is infected Maya, then Achinta Bheda Bhed Tattva, Shuddha Bhakti, that is only Sadhana, that is Abhideya, and Krishna Kriti, that is Prayojan, that is Sadhya. Amnaya, that Vedic yeah, yeah. knowledge comes from Parampara, and additional five yeah, points. No need in, to explain but, detail, Mataji. Yeah, this much sufficient. Uh, we will hear from others also. Okay, <laughs> we will cover you. everything other way. Okay. So, uh, somebody else want to share what else we discussed last time? Just you can tell in short, just what theme was touched, not detail. We discussed some five points, which is specially for Gaudiya Vaishnavas. After this Dashamul Tattva, we discussed five essential points for Gaudiya Vaishnavas also. What are the five things, especially of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas? Anybody remembers? What is that? Okay, I will show that five points. Okay, one shloka at okay, Mataji only raised and anybody else. Uh who else was there? Ganga Putra was there, na? Last class, you were there, Prabhuji? Uh, no, Prabhuji, I was not there. Sorry. Okay, okay, yeah. Prasanna Gopal Prabhu was surely there. But uh, are you here? Are you able to hear, Prabhuji? Yes, Prabhuji, but not able to remember. Ah, uh, okay, okay. I so I, I will yeah. share. One shloka we had discussed. You remember that... Uh, Aradhya Bhagavan Vrajeshtanias Taddham Vrindavanam Ramya Kachit Upasana Vrajavadhu Vargena Yakalpita Correct Srimad Bhagavatam Pramana Mamulam Prema Pumartho Mahan Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Matam Idam Tatra Adara Na Paraha So this shloka actually we had discussed this has five essential points which is unique to Gaudiya Vaishnavas Okay, so this was very essential. We discussed because we wanted to show that even other Vaishnava Sampradayas may not have these five things. Okay, so are you able to see the screen I'm sharing? Yes, Prajeev. Yes. Able to see. Okay, okay. So this actually other devotees were sharing. These are the 10 points which were there discussed earlier. <laughs> Lord Hari is actually first one, two, and three were about the, the Bhagavad Tattva, the Tattva about the Lord, and then fourth, fifth, sixth, they were about the Jiva Tattva, how they are Vivinamsha in that two categories are there, Baddha and Mukta, correct, and seventh, eighth, and ninth, and also tenth is which is the Amnaya Tattva. I'm, I'll come to that. Seven, eight, nine. They are actually discussed in the three, yeah. So one is the tattva, 
which we follow this everybody is aware achinta bheda bheda tatva so did anyone notice this word tatva this tatva why does the word tatva come here what is the meaning of tatva in tatva english knowing, knowing knowing actually veda veda is knowing or knowledge philosophy tatva principle. yeah philosophy is darshan actually in sanskrit darshan is translated as philosophy in english actually there is very very uh, difficult to translate this sanskrit word sometimes in english so one way which i found the translation can be philosophical uh, understanding of any concept that is called tatva there is no one word translation as such okay foundational philosophical understanding we can say so actually if you see we have in the various sampradaya different different things okay they are called as vad okay have you heard this word vad <clears throat> maya vad anybody heard maya vad those were in response debate debate uh, debate uh? yeah yeah obviously it is vad means conversation discussion dvaitavad advaitavad dvaitavad yeah discussion kind of yeah so please keep yourself mute if you are not speaking some noise is coming in background yeah uh previous yeah, so i had uh, mm. Mm. regarding tatva like it uh, it specifies particularly for something uh, mm. like once i was hearing govind puru's lectures so govind puru mm. was explaining tatva like we say jiva tatva vishnu tatva mm. shambhu tatva like Mm. is particularly specifies uh, the terminology okay yeah like yeah that. correct yeah what we are comparing here is uh, the philosophy of one sampradaya and other so we have uh, like uh, advaitvad then there is dvaitvad and then there is dvait advaitvad correct so when ramanujacharya came he gave one philosophy which is called uh, vad actually okay so whatever it may be the acharyas vad ramana acharya came first shankara acharya obviously who gave advaitvad then uh, ramana acharya came he gave vishishta advaitvad correct and then we have madhva acharya who came he told no everything is true so his photo also you will see in photo also is preaching madhva acharya okay what is saying to that is dvaitvad madhva acharya so these are all vad means vad means discussion they are in discussion But when Chetan Mahapru comes, he doesn't give a vad. He gives the tattva. Tattva means it's a final, conclusive thing. Okay, final conclusion. So what is the final conclusion of the scriptures? Achintya bhed abhed tattva. He doesn't say vad, Chetan Mahapru. So that is the significance of Lord Chetan Mahapru. When Lord Himself comes, He doesn't give a just a conversation or a discussion. Vad. He gives tattva. that is called a conclusive truth okay so that is called achinta bheda bheda tatva okay so that what i wanted to this say here and then when we see here shuddha bhakti is the only way to sadhana this abhidaya is prayojana and this i did not say but actually this refers to the sambandha gyan correct all of us know sambandha abhidaya and prayojana right this refers to the sambandha okay so so i did not write right last time so these three we discussed correct and then five essential points that were for the gaudiya vaishnava sampradaya was presented in this shloka what is this shloka we discussed now aradhya bhagwan rajasthaniya tad dham vrindavanam five essential factors were there so first is that we worship the son of nanda okay second is that we take shelter of vrindavan dham third whom do we worship in the vrindavan dham or whom do we follow as a worship is the gopis of vrindavan correct vraj vadhu vargena ya kalpita correct and then fourth point was that which is a literature which directs us to such a worship according to gopis worship is shrimad bhagavatam okay that is the authority for all of us and then fifth point was what is the goal for all the gaudiya vaishnavas prema not not liberation salokya sarishti samipya not all these kind of things but prema only so these five things are the 
opinion of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And what kind of opinion he is giving? He is giving the opinion which is conclusive. Okay. So that is a conclusive opinion he gives. Not like that. Okay. That is a conclusive, op conclusive opinion he gives. Okay. So this we discussed. Yeah. Anything else? Anybody want to share? From the second part of presentation. Then we discuss 6.47 in summary. We discussed the shloka. Okay, there we discussed some important points. Anyone who would like to share? Those who have not spoken till now and who were present or heard the recordings. Yeah, obviously I wanted to mention if you are not present in the class, then please hear the recording and then come for the class. Obviously this time there were some issues for uploading, but uh, next time we will upload. Okay, so... Yamuna Vlas just remind me at the end, we will check about the two things, attendance and about the recording, if somebody else can do. Uh, okay. Yes, sure, Prabhuji. Uh, Prabhuji, yeah. uh, I have a yeah. small query. Uh, this verse, you know, Aradhya Bhagavad, ah, yeah, yeah. it's from uh, which uh, scripture, like from where, uh, where it is mentioned, this verse? Yeah, so this I had mentioned last time. This is one Acharya called Srinath Chakravarti. Okay, my screen is visible, right? Yes, Prabhuji. Okay, so there is some problem I have in writing on this PDF. But uh, you can write in your notes. Srinath Chakravarti, he has written a scripture called Chaitanya Mat Manjusha. Okay. Chaitanya Mat Okay. Mat Manjusha. Okay. You just type in folio this shloka, you will get also. Chaitanya Mat, M A T A, that is. <laughs> I don't know what is the problem here. Okay. Chaitanya Mat Manjusha, that is. Yeah. So that book he has written, in that he has quoted this shloka, and there he says that. The opinion of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is this, five things. Okay. And then he says, yeah, one more thing. So this Srinath Chakravarti, his spiritual master is Kavi Karnapur. Okay. So if I'm not wrong, yeah, Kavi Karnapur. His spiritual master is Kavi Karnapur. Srinath Chakravarti. Okay. And he has written this book, Chaitanya Mata Manjusha, in which he writes this shloka. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's what you are asking, Na Prabhu. Yeah, yes, Prabhu. Yeah, thank you. Prabhu. Yeah, yeah. So you can just type in folio also, it will come. Okay. So that book is there, yeah. Okay. Prabhu, so, just second part. Shloka, hmm. This yeah. shloka of Arat Bhagavan Rajesh is always quoted by His Holiness Bhakti Rasamrit Swami Maharaj after Mangala Chari in his every Bhagavatam class. Yes, yes, I have also observed, yeah, because this is the essence of our Gaudiya Sampradaya Mataji, yeah. Correct. So that's why I have also observed, yeah, he quotes in his Mangalachara. This is very essential shloka, because uh, many times devotees, uh, like, uh, they are not able to focus, we understand that who is the object of worship. Sometimes they think Gaudiya Vaishnavas means they can worship, uh, uh, as I am saying worship, as the object of attainment uh, towards whom we want to have prema. Do we want to have prema towards uh, Vishnu? Do we want to have prema towards Lord Ram? Do we want to have prema towards uh, Varaha, Narsimha? Do we want to have prema towards this person who is mentioned here, Rajesh Tanya, who is living in Vrindavan, as explained in Srimad Bhagavatam and worshipped by the gopis? This person is the person or the all others whom I mentioned. So there is so much confusion that devotees have sometimes. Who is to be, to be worshipped? Obviously, everybody is to be worshipped. But who is the person towards whom I want to develop prema? Whom I want to relate with? Okay. Who with whom I want to have dasiras, sakhiras, or vatsaliras, or madhuriras? With who is that person? When that question is asked, all the acharyas give one answer. This Rajesh Taneha Krishna, Shyam Sundar Krishna, Yashoda Nandan Krishna, Rajendra Nandan Krishna. That is very, very clear. So that's why this shloka is 
very very important okay so they could have told uh, uh, some other person's worship not rajavadhu vargena okay not the gopis like there is another shloka which says gopi bhartu pad kamale they could have told uh, some other person's bhartu okay uh, who is the fulfiller or maintainer of some other devotees so many devotees are there right there is prahlad there is hanuman there are so many other devotees but it says specifically gopi bhartu so we have to understand as intelligent devotees who are they pointing to and that is the object of worship of all gaudiya vaishnava acharyas okay so that's why this shloka is important okay so anybody has any more question on this topic okay so then we'll go to second part of what we discussed 6.47 we were discussing okay so there are some important points two three points they can say whoever was attending the class and if you have not attended then you should have heard the recording or in future you should hear and then come for the next class that will be very good system because you can share something and then you will also are able to understand the next class what we are discussing because if i prepare something based on previous class and you have not heard the previous class then uh, it's like un, it's like broken chain so you will not be get getting 100% of your 2 hours because my intention is when you come for 2 hours i should be able to serve you the best so that that 2 hours is most efficiently used so if you have not done your part of hearing previous recording or what is the link then it will be difficult to understand ओके ओके यस प्रेरणा माता जी यस प्रभु जी वी वेरी इन इन द बिगिनिंग यू डिस्कस्ड अबाउट 6.47 योगी नाम ऑफ द सर्विस या वर्स एंड इन दैट यू मेंशन द वर्ड भजते इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज़ सर्विस इज अन टू लॉर्ड कृष्णा एंड वर्शिप इज फॉर द डेमी गॉड्स देन या प्रभुपाद मेंशन टू दिया यस प्रभुपाद मेंशन प्रभुपाद ओनली मेंशन एंड यस and bhakti yoga means uh, bhakti yoga how bhakti yoga is superior and it is like mount everest uh, and how it is superior than other yoga system correct yeah. so and bhakti means anya vilashita shunya fully yes, yes okay yes thank you mataji thank you okay yamuna vilas so rikshna uh, pruji i want to apologize yeah, because uh, this yeah. week i was uh, like not able to upload the recording on time and there was some issue with the recording so i think that's why many devotees might have yeah yeah Here. no I'll, no actually yeah i'll make sure that yeah, then, like, sunday end of the day it is uploaded no 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 actually you are doing more than what you are supposed to do actually we have we should have another batch coordinator but you are already having so much of service there so saturday sunday temple services and so many other things you have so still you are taking out time so we'll try to distribute some services okay i was even thinking of doing it on cloud so i they can just take it from there so i will just uh, check with bvrv if we can do the recording on cloud then immediately the recording is available other we have to upload so we will discuss that later too yeah so you want to share also something no project that's it yeah okay so yeah anybody else from 6.47 shloka because that shloka is the seed verse of bhakti yoga right so there krishna is speaking how bhakti is the topmost so anybody want to share what we discussed yes arun prabhu hare krishna so like uh, we have discussed that uh, when we talk about yoga then bhakti it only yoga refers to bhakti yoga only it does not refer to mm-hmm. any other yoga and uh, why is it so so like uh, we told in the last class that all the other yogas are stairs to the top which is bhakti yoga and uh, and therefore like uh, experts they say that uh, if uh, karma yoga when it is with done with knowledge and renunciation it becomes uh, uh, gyan uh, gyan yoga and when the uh, there was something like uh, gyan yoga and when it increases in meditation or the concentration increases it becomes ashtanga yoga and when mm-hmm. one surpasses and uh, starts worshiping krishna supreme personality of god then it becomes bhakti yoga and in this way yeah. like it is the highest and yoga refers to this bhakti yoga only correct yeah. the prabhupada only and said therefore, in the purport actually and therefore like yogi nam api sarvesham so therefore the one who is uh, who is uh, like worshiping krishna 
is the top most yogi in sense of correct, this person correct. yes yes so we discussed that point yes okay thank you very much bro so thank you very much for sharing so we will go to the seventh chapter now i hope everybody has shared whatever they wanted yeah yeah so this seventh chapter discussion starts from the seed verse is 6.47 as i told yogi nam api sarvesham madgaten antaratmana shraddhavan bhajate yo mam same yukta tamo mataha okay so this we have discussed last time so in that shloka three things were mentioned actually so which gives the continuation to this chapter hmm. so what are the three important points mentioned in that shloka so yogi nam api sarvesham among all the yogis described earlier so who are the yogis described earlier we had uh, karma yogi gyan gyan yogi karma yogi karma gyan ashtang yogi ashtang correct gyan yogi we had then we had ashtang yogi majorly these were described in the chapters 1 to 6 correct so now krishna is saying among all these types of yogis sarvesham among all this who is the yukta tamah yukta means engaged so then he is saying that tamah means highest of all this yogi so he is saying that is a bhakti yogi how do we know that is a bhakti yogi three classical symptoms krishna is giving in this shloka what are the three words so yogi nam api sarvesham mad gatena antaratmana that is first one okay so he is saying mad gatena antar atmana okay this is the first thing he mentioned similarly what is second thing can anybody identify i told one what is second point that krishna told in that shloka yogi nam api sarvesham mad gatena antar atmana then what is the next yeah shraddhavan shraddhavan yes shraddhavan correct shraddhavan that was the second thing he told okay then what is the third thing he said shraddhavan bhajate yo maam okay then what maam means there krishna is saying he is shraddhavan and he is doing bhajan of me bhajan krishna uh, sorry shila prabha defined as devotional service he does devotional service to me but what is the adjective to that Uh, that is the third point what is that yukta uh, yeah same yukta tama is highest but that whole thing has obviously devotional service the what is that word for devotional service mentioned there in the shloka Jute. in what way is engaged bhajate yes bhajate only this is the way he is engaged he is not engaged in meditation means meditation i mean in the sense of doing ashtang yoga okay and knowledge in the sense of gyan yoga ek bhakti yogi also has knowledge he also has does meditation on the form of lord but not like ashtang yogi and gyan yogi and bhakti yogi also does activity but not like karma yogi karma yogi may want to do it for his own enjoyment but bhakti yogi has all these elements but it is specifically towards the object of his devotion devotional service that proper defined so these three were essential points that actually krishna spoke as the seed of bhakti yoga so these are the seed of bhakti yoga which krishna spoke then he is going to expand this whole seed into six chapters which are the six chapters 7 to 12 is expansion on these three points ओके मद गते न अंतरात्मन ऑलवेज थिंकिंग ऑफ मी इन साइड हिम श्रद्धावान ही हैज फेथ इन मी एंड देन ही डज डिवोशनल सर्विस टू मी ओके सो नाउ सेवेंथ चैप्टर एज वी स्टार्ट द दीस थ्री पॉइंट्स विल बी एक्सपेंडेड आई विल शो हियर सो दिस असंशयम ओके वील रिसाइट दिस श्लोक एंड देन कम टू दिस श्री भगवान उवाच सो ऑल कैन रिसाइट अलॉन्ग विथ मी ओके नॉट आफ्टर मी सो दैट देर इज कोहरेंट अदरवाइज एवरी विल रिसाइट एट देर ओन टाइम्स बिकॉज ऑफ जूम लैग 
सो श्री भगवान उवाच मैया सत्ता पार्थ योगम युंजन संशय समग्रम यथा ग्यासी तत्णो ओके सो हियर नाउ कृष्णा इज स्टार्टिंग टू स्पीक सो नाउ द क्वेश्चन कम्स सिक्स पॉइंट फोर्टी सेवन हु वॉज स्पीकिंग सिक्स पॉइंट फोर्टी सेवन कृष्णा और अर्जुना कृष्णा 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 स्पीकिंग नाउ ऑल्सो श्री भगवान ओनली राइट नाउ अर्जुना इज नॉट आज एनी क्वेश्चन ओनली करेक्ट जनरली हरे कृष्णा प्लीज कीप योर सेल्फ इन म्यूट किशोर व्यास प्रभु ओके सो प्रभु आई वॉज थिंकिंग वन मोर थिंग विलास प्रभु इफ वी कैन कीप एवरीबडी इन म्यूट एंड वेन एनीबडी रेज इज हैंड एंड देन वी कैन अनम्यूट देम सो दैट दे कैन स्पीक एंड हु एवर एज रेज हैंड अर्लियर कैन बी गिवन चांस टू स्पीक अदरवाइज इफ आई आस्क एनी थिंग देन एवरीबडी एक्चुअली स्पीक्स एंड समटाइम देर इज अनोइंगली ऑल्सो दे अनम्यूट ओके सो वील ट्राई दैट फॉर सम टाइम इफ दैट वर्क ओके सो देर इज ऑप्शन इन द सेटिंग्स आई थिंक यू नो ऑलरेडी राइट टू नॉट अलाउ डिट इज टू अनम्यूट दे कैन रेज एंड देन वी कैन अनम्यूट दैम ओके यस सो कीप माई मी अनम्यूटेड आई थिंक दैट शुड बी पॉसिबल या ओके सो we'll try for some time let's see how it works 6.47 krishna is speaking now generally we see in bhagavad gita krishna stops speaking or arjuna has a question he asks and then what happens krishna answers right but here what happened did arjuna ask any question no he did not ask any question so krishna stopped sir krishna just continued speaking so what it means later we will study this is out of compassion that krishna understanding the mind of arjuna he is continuing to speak okay out of compassion krishna continues speaking okay that is very essential point here he has not been asked any question specifically the question is not asked about the content of the chapter only what is the title of this chapter see here one slide before what does shila prupa title this knowledge of the absolute okay and other acharyas have also titled bhagavat gyana vigyana yoga okay bhagavat gyana vigyana yoga so this actually as we will go into this chapter it has gyana and it has vigyana correct these two things are going to be described in this so more details about this we will see but arjuna has not asked this arjuna is not asking a question krishna is saying on his own when did this happen last time in bhagavad gita arjuna did not ask but krishna answered Uh, Krishna answered me. Krishna just started speaking. When did this happen? Last time. Which chapter? Let's see how much all of you covered this first six chapters. Okay, you can raise hand and then we can unmute you. Okay, so please raise your hands so that we can get the answer. When did it happen last time? first chapter don't tell first chapter obviously there yeah i think mata ji speaking something prerna mata ji but we are not able to hear you want to speak something mata ji no okay nobody has answer huh? okay then okay you can take it as homework then so next class you can tell me when did this happen that krishna spoke without asking correct it is not good to speak without asking right somebody doesn't ask you any advice but uh, you give advice so 
ओके समबडी फाइनली रेज्ड हैंड यस दीपाली माता जी प्लीज अनम्यूट योरसेल्फ चैप्टर नंबर 4 वेरी फेंटली ऑडिबल चैप्टर ठीक नंबर है 4 हाँ वेरी गुड यस चैप्टर नंबर फोर या वुड यू लाइक टू टेल समथिंग व्हाट हैपन देयर व्हाट वाज द थर्ड चैप्टर अबाउट एंड देन फोर्थ चैप्टर व्हाई डिड कृष्णा स्पीक देयर सडनली व्हाट आर द कॉन्टेक्स्ट ऑफ दैट Yeah, the last verse of third chapter is Kamesha Krodha Ishara Jogana Samudbhava. hmm And after that, in fourth chapter, he continues with Imam Vivaswate Yoga. hmm okay what is the purpose of his speaking that knowledge there Um, what are the third chapters speaking about? Last section. Okay, anybody else can also answer. Yes, anyone? Yeah. Third chapter, last section. What was it? Uh, Proj, it was about overcoming the lust. You know, Ah, the yes. imminent, imminent enemy. And I think uh, Yeah. then Krishna speaks this uh, Imam, this I mean, the fourth chapter, to uh, uh, to and make Krishna, Arjuna understand that uh, lust can only overcome by knowledge. When we have the knowledge, then we can. Uh, the intelligence will be strong uh, to overcome this lust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, one good thing about being coordinator is you know you can unmute yourself without asking and raising. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'm sorry. So, no, 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 I'm not. I'm just making little light. Okay, yeah. So what actually is said is very right that their lust was the formidable enemy, as Sri Prabhupada calls. Then to remove that, Krishna spoke. transcendental knowledge right that was the title of the fourth chapter transcendental knowledge right and there uh, there was another purpose of this transcendental knowledge one was to remove this lust and second one was about nishkam karma yoga in that there is an element of detachment okay so this detachment to come this knowledge is required okay one purpose of this transcendental knowledge in chapter 4 okay don't confuse with this chapter's knowledge this is transcendental knowledge of chapter 4 was to remove the lust of whom this was for a gyan yogi actually not specifically for bhakti yogi it was it was for gyan obviously shri prabhupada explains it for bhakti yogi also which is obviously right but in the context it was gyan yogi and nishkam karma yogi also needs detachment that detachment comes from knowledge right so these two were the purposes of speaking that knowledge now what is the purpose of this seventh chapter coming to this word this knowledge what is the purpose in the seventh chapter that we will discuss okay but one thing to understand krishna did not speak because arjuna asked something okay yeah so we were discussing this verse yeah so coming back here so out of compassion krishna is speaking so what does he speak here again he specifically tells three points first let us see the translation so in translation he is saying the supreme personality of godhead said what with your mind attached to me mai asakt manah okay and then he says establishing a relationship with me yogam union surrender to me alone mad ashraya you will know me in my complete form samagram mam yatha gyasasi without doubt asamshayam please listen that should know okay so somebody can also read the translation of shila propat This was translation by Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur. Shri Prabhu's translation. Somebody can read. Yeah. The supreme Yeah. personality of Godhead said, "Now Yeah. hear, O son of Pratha, how by practicing yoga in full consciousness of me, with mind attached to me, you can know me in full, free of doubt." Yes. So, the same thing in different words. So these three things are again coming here. What are the three things mentioned? what is the first thing among the three things here okay so somebody would like to say you can put in chat box also um, okay or you can raise hand yes yes arun bro what is the first thing here that in is to this practice 
practice yoga with full consciousness of Krishna. Yeah, what is the Sanskrit word for that? Uh, that is Yatha uh, full consciousness. No, no. Prabhupada has taken the word Mad Ashraya. Mad Ashraya, Mad Ashraya. Yeah. So you all of you should have the book Mad Ashraya. Keep your Prabhupada books in front so that word to word meaning you can see. I have not shown word to word meaning here. So Mad Ashraya, this word is one thing which has been spoken as full consciousness of me. Okay. Then what else? Second point is okay, I will say here. We have a little less time. Mai asakta manaha. Okay. This I will say as first. Yogam union, madashraya, in full consciousness of me. Mai asakta manaha means what? With your mind attached to me. Okay. And then, where is that? Madashraya. So surrender to me alone or in full Krishna consciousness. That is the meaning. And then he says what? Asamshayam, samagram, maam. So, the third thing is you will know me without any doubt. Okay. So, here what is the flow of this whole thing we can see. You can see that here the focus is about hearing. Correct. This word, Shinu, is about here. And we can see in Purport also, Shila Prabhupada will focus a lot on this word, Shinu. Okay, and one shloka he will take from Srimad Bhagavatam, which has the same word, Shrinu. So, he has focused on Shrinu also a lot. Mm. So, whole thing, the flow is going like, now here, O son of Pritha, how by practicing yoga in full consciousness of me, with mind attached to me, you can know me in full. Correct? So, this is the sutra to know Krishna in full. Okay, this shloka is speaking about this. How to know Krishna in full. And what kind of fullness? It is without doubt. Okay, without doubt it will come. And this is more explained in the shloka number two. Okay, what is that without doubt? And another thing is here. And then end is what? You will not have any doubt. What comes in, in between? Can somebody see the shloka and tell? Between hearing and no doubt, what is there in between? How one should hear? This is the end result, third it's point. Attachment. Attachment. Yes, Attachment. yes, yes. Correct. Yeah, hearing is a process, but it should be done with one and two. Then it will lead to what? Then it will lead to three. No doubt. Correct. So, hearing is a process should be done with two points. Mai asakta mana as well as madashraya. Okay. So, these two together will bring us to no doubt. So, that is the flow of this shloka. Now, as we discussed 6.47, so I have three points. Mai asakta mana, then madashraya and asamshayam. Can you identify some things which we match from 6.47? So keep your Bhagavad Gita in front of you, either soft copy or hard copy. Refer to that shloka. Madhgaten Antaratmana is matching with which three points in 6.47, matching with 7.1? It is like Madhgaten Antar is always thinking of me, is matching with, is always attached to me. It's fully attached to me. Madhgaten Antar. Okay, let's hear from others. Okay. Okay, it may be right or wrong. Let's hear from others also. Yeah. Yeah. So please raise your hand and unmute. Yeah. Okay. I'll. I'll... Kishore Vyaspuru. Yeah. What is mat matching with Madhgati and Antaratmana? You are able to unmute? I gave you permission. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, for me, one second. Madhgatena No, no, not Madhashraya. Who is speaking? 
mind attached no no somebody spoke you right answer only but arun true had told sakta only so okay okay yeah mai asakta only is the madgaten antaratmana this was same thing arun true told actually okay and there is another word in that shraddhavan with faith okay so what is the point matching here madashraya is remaining Uh, some shyam is remaining, which is matching here. Okay, Arun too already answered. Somebody else. Shraddha one with faith. This is easy. Okay, Deepali Mata ji. Yes. Mada. Sorry. Mada Ashraya. Mada Ashraya. Okay, let's hear from other. Okay, Yamuna Vilasro. Asam shyam proj without doubt because when there is faith, then there is no doubt. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Assumption. It matches the assumption without doubt. Correct. And uh, what is the third point here? Budgete. Okay, devotional service. Okay. So this will come in the future verses. Okay. Not to be matched here with Madashraya. Okay. So that will come in the future verse. Budgete, devotional service. Okay. Let's read Shri Prabhupada's commentary here. Okay. So somebody can read this. Nagnijiti Priya Mataji, would you like to read? Yes, Prabhu Ji. Yeah, yes. Shrila Prabhupada, in this seventh chapter of Bhagavad Gita, the nature of Krishna consciousness is fully described. Krishna is full in all opulences, and how he manifests such opulences is described herein. Also, four kinds of fortunate people. Who become attached to Krishna and four kinds of unfortunate people who never take to Krishna are described in this chapter. In the yeah, first yeah. six chapters Thank of Bhagavad. Yes, Mataji. Yeah, just a few things here. So here, Prabhupada is telling what is the content of this chapter. Okay, chapter seven. What are the contents? So two specific topic Prabhupada is saying here. So first, he is saying the nature of Krishna consciousness is fully described, and in that. what he is specifying that krishna's opulences will be described and how he manifests such opulences will be described this is the first point this is the content of this chapter and also what is the second second thing of this chapter four kinds of fortunate people who become attached and four kinds of unfortunate people who never take to krishna are described so these are the two important contents of this chapter which will be described yes mata ji please continue In the first six chapters of Bhagavad Gita, the living entity has been described as non-material spirit soul capable of elevating himself to self-realization by different types of yogas. Yeah, this we discussed right again. Again, we discussed that three types of yoga system: Karma Yoga, Gyan Yoga, Ashtang Yoga. These all were described in the first six chapters. Yes, yes, Mata Ji. At the end of the sixth chapter, it has been clearly stated. that the steady concentration of the mind upon krishna or in other words krishna consciousness is the highest form of all yoga by concentrating one's mind upon krishna one is able to know the absolute truth completely but not otherwise impersonal brahma jyoti or localized parmatma realization is not perfect knowledge of the absolute truth because it is partial yes, yes. Scientific- thank you Yes, Mathi. So I want to ask one question here to all the devotees. So whoever wants to answer, please raise your hand. Here, Prabhupada is writing here one specific thing. By concentrating one's mind upon Krishna, one is able to know the absolute truth completely, not otherwise. Okay. So what is Prabhupada talking about here? So when you are reading the purport, my request is please keep the shloka in mind. Whenever we read the purport. Keep this shloka in mind. Okay, what is shloka? Okay, mai asakta manah partha yoga mujjan madashraya asamshayam samagramam yatha gyasisi tachrunu and keep the translation in front of you because I will be asking question in between that particular sentence of Prabhupad is referring to which part of this shloka. So can somebody tell me raising hands and unmute that which part of the shloka is this saying? What is Prabhupad saying about? Atashraya. 
Mm, what is the meaning of Madhashraya, Prabhuji? Please see here. Okay. What is the meaning of Madhashraya? Hare Krishna, please read here. What is the meaning? Yes, I was trying to bring out that point. With your mind attached to me, as Srila Prabhupada has told here, word to word meaning if you see, mind attached, asakta, same thing. Okay. So when we read this, so he is saying, that concentrating one's mind very clearly has told about the mind is not talking about surrender it's talking about concentrating one's mind so if we are attentive we can identify this is talking about asakta mana right and then what is the result of this is shlapa talking here by this what will happen one is able to know the absolute truth completely what is here Prabhupada is talking about knowing absolute truth completely what which part of the shloka he is referring to? Yes, somebody else can answer. Yes, Deepali Mataji. Okay, you answered earlier. You answered earlier, yes, Mataji. We can give chance to Bhakti Leela Mataji. Yes, Samadra. Mataji. Yes, Samadra. yes, very good. Yes, very good, yes. So, this is referring to Samagram. Okay, see the word meaning. What is Samagram referring to here? So, know me in my complete form. Okay. Or as Shila Prabhupada has told, if you see Samagram, he is saying that completely. Correct? So, Samagram Maam, know me completely. Like that. So, Shila Prabhupada is talking about some part of the shloka when he is writing in the purport. So, when we read like this, we can understand and connect to the shloka. Otherwise, we will just go on reading and say that Prabhupada is always writing the same thing. Okay. So, keep in mind what Prabhupada is talking about. Yeah. Yes, Mataji. Yeah, please continue. You discuss about Paramatma. Yeah. Incomplete Krishna consciousness one knows that Krishna is ultimate knowledge beyond any doubts. Different yeah, so types of... What is Prabhupada talking about here? Which part of the shloka? Without any doubts? Asamsayam. Okay, this is about Asamsayam. Okay, and what is the first part of this line? In which state? Complete Krishna consciousness. What is Prabhupada talking about here? This word complete again. Okay, I don't know who is answering. Uh, uh, Gopal, yeah, okay. Okay, what is, what is the meaning of Maya yes, Sakta? Asak, we are getting attached to the uh, mind, is atta uh, engaged or attached to the in the service of Krishna. Okay, okay. Yeah, attached that much only. Attached. My aspect yes. is attached to Krishna. Okay. Yes. So, and what is the word here? Complete Krishna consciousness, right? So there is no attachment directly said here. What is said here? The word is complete. Is there any word complete in the shloka? See the translation. What two word meanings? Anything referring to this word complete? Samagram. 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 Same. Yes, so Prabhupada is saying about this. In this Samagram means in this complete knowledge, what he will know, he knows that Krishna is the ultimate knowledge beyond any doubts. Okay, this ultimate knowledge will be explained later that actually he is the source of everything and everything depends on him. Okay, that will start coming from the shloka number 7. Okay, seventh shloka onwards it will come when Krishna will explain his vibhuti. Yes, yes, Nagni Pijiti Priyamathaji, please continue. Different types of yoga are only stepping stones on the path of Krishna consciousness. Yes, yeah. One who takes directly to Krishna consciousness automatically knows about Brahma Jyoti and Paramatma in full. By practicing of Krishna consciousness yoga, one can know everything in full Namely, the absolute truth, the living entities, the material nature, and their manifestations with paraphernalia. Yeah, thank you. What? Yes, yes, yeah, thank you. Till here, actually, Prabhupada has written the paragraph he has completed. So, till here, whatever was described 
was everything about samagram actually if you are could identify he has explained the point samagram okay starting from the paragraph previously okay so i mentioned here samagram started here right so from here onwards prabhupada started describing samagram okay so he started from here samagram and then the samagram point continued till here okay how to know krishna in full so that he says by practice of krishna consciousness yoga one can know everything in full samagram what all things include in that first namely the absolute truth that's why the title of the chapter is what knowing the absolute truth okay so and what else knowing the living entities the material nature their manifestations with paraphernalia so what all things prabhupada is mentioning here so first one is about the ishvara tattva second the living entity is about the jiva tattva the material nature what is this material nature this metal nature is prakriti and what are their manifestations all the different manifestations of the prakriti which are the 24 elements okay these all things so prabhupad is going to combine all this in the first line of the next shloka purport he will call it as msc okay so matter spirit and the controller of both okay that is called complete knowledge matter spirit and controller of both okay i will write otherwise later we will forget controller of both that is called complete knowledge that's what propas is talking about that he will explain in the second shloka purport line number 1 we'll come to that okay one yes. should therefore begin yoga practice as directed in the last verse of the sixth chapter concentration okay. of the mind upon krishna the supreme is made possible by prescribed devotional service in nine hmm. different forms of which shravanam is the first and most important yes thank you so now i want to ask a question what is this concentration of mind propas is speaking about what is this in the shloka what point is he referring to look at the shloka and tell me what is this concentration of mind here ट्रेशन ऑफ माइंड स्पीकिंग अबाउट द माइंड इट से correct so again he is saying about asakta manah how to concentrate the mind upon krishna yes and what are the methods given of devotional service that is the methods of devotional service okay which last verse it was told about the bhaj dhatu bhajate okay so that was told there so this is about the process of devotional service engaging ourselves in devotional service i had told it will come later right the bhaj point so that is bhajate yes mataji continue the lord therefore says to arjuna tak shruno or hear from me no one can be a greater authority than krishna and therefore by hearing from him one receives the greatest opportunity to become a perfectly krishna conscious yes. person yes so somebody would like to tell what topic is propad beginning to describe here now from this slide what is going to what is starting here describing somebody who has not spoken i want to ask him so let's see who else is there 
ओके ओके सुविधा माता जी वुड यू लाइक टू से वॉट इज ला प्रोपा डिस्क्राइबिंग हियर वेरी सिंपल विच पार्ट ऑफ द श्लोका इज ही डिस्क्राइबिंग फ्रॉम दिस स्लाइड ऑनवर्ड्स या यू कैन अनम्यूट नाउ Prabhuji, as far as I'm, I'm understanding, uh, he's trying to say like, uh, um, what is the first line? The answer is already there in that. Here. Yeah, more than. Yeah, here he's saying here, from me, correct. So Prabhupada is speaking about that last part of the shloka. You have the yeah, Bhagavad Gita, sure. right? Yes, Prabhu Ji, sure. I I got that. I I don't know how to pronounce it properly. Shran C H. Ah, uh, Shrino. 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 No problem. You can speak in English. No problem. So that is about hearing. Yes. Yeah. So that is about hearing process. Yeah. So as I told in the very first slide here, so here the process of hearing is emphasized. Okay, and with the in with the attitude of two things, Maya Sakta Mana and Madashraya. Okay, one and two that are marked here. These two attitudes should be there in hearing. Then what will happen? One will not have any doubt, and he will get full knowledge. Okay, that's what the flow of the shloka is. He will get the full knowledge. So this is what we are understanding in this whole purport. Okay, this whole purport is describing about this flow. So now, Prabhupada is describing about this part, hearing. Okay, let's discuss that. Yeah. So yes, Mataji, please continue. Namaji, Tipri, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Namaji, Tipri, Mataji, there. Okay, somebody else can read. Arun, Pru, would you like to read? Yes, Pru. One has, therefore, to learn from Krishna directly, or from a pure devotee of Krishna, and not from a non-devotee upstart. One minute. Previous line. Previous line. Previous line. From here. No, no one can be a greater authority than Krishna, and therefore, yeah. by hearing from him, one yeah. receives the greatest opportunity to become a perfectly Krishna conscious person. Okay. One has, yeah. one has, therefore, to learn from Krishna directly, or from from a pure devotee of Krishna. And not from a non-devotee upstart, popped up with academic education. In the Shrimad yes. Bhagavatam. Yes, one minute, bro. Yeah. So here, Prabhupada is going to quote the shlokas. We'll come to it. But just want to point out one very important thing. Prabhupada is saying, the highest authority, greatest authority is Krishna. Okay. Directly, we can hear. Okay. Now, what are the subsequent authorities in? Uh, The hearing process. Oh, Can somebody tell? Yeah, somebody else. I want to answer. What are the other things which are not mentioned here? Yeah, Yamuna Vilas, bro. Okay. One you can tell, uh, or you can tell whatever you want. Yeah. Project was thinking about twelve margins. Twelve margins. Okay. Let's keep them here. Okay. You can keep unmuting, bro. Whoever raised hand. Yeah, twelve margin. Okay. Whoever raised hand. Yeah. Uh, Prabhu, I have not uh, applied that setting yet, so devotees can. Uh... Oh, okay, okay, no, okay, 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 okay. It's okay, no problem. Still, they are not speaking with. Uh, with can, I, can I can I speak then? Ah, yes, 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 <laughs> yes, bro. Evam karam kara praptam. So, like. completed the answer. Thank you. so these are the other three okay first is krishna and then 
we have guru sadhu shastra okay so in that we also we have the order so this is the order shastra comes first then comes the sadhu then comes the guru so who are the sadhus sadhus are the previous acharyas like you said 12 mahajans right and our gaudiya vaishnava acharyas right gaudiya acharyas we have shila prabhupad and other previous acharyas like rup goswami and all others <clears throat> okay so they are sadhus guru is our spiritual master can we say shiksha guru or diksha guru and shastra all of us understand that is the not any shastra but the shastra is referring to the gaudiya shastras okay gaudiya shastras so we have shrimad bhagavatam we have chaitanya charitamrit we have bhagavad gita we are studying like that okay there is some gradation i will not go in detail bhagavad gita comes in vedic shastra actually bhagavatam is uh, the vaishnava shastra and chaitanya charitamrita is more specifically gaudiya vaishnava shastra because that may not be accepted by other sampradayas like madhvacharya sampraday madhva sampraday ramanuja sampraday chaitanya charitamrita is more about gaudiya vaishnavas and then shrimad bhagavatam is accepted by all four sampradayas that's why it is vaishnava sam vaishnava uh, shastra and bhagavad gita is vedic shastra everybody has to accept whether he is a vaishnava or not everybody has to accept that is bhagavad gita so these are different things which are our pivots pivots you understand right so that is a central point around which we revolve so these are the pivots for us krishna's words himself that is highest authority and then guru sadhu and shastra and in this order first comes shastra then comes the previous acharyas and then our current acharyas okay so i am saying this point why because prabhupada is going to bring out a very 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 important point this this is a very very important point which prabhupada is bringing out so i want to focus on this very much so what is he saying here okay just one minute kya ho gaya yeah so what are you saying one has therefore to learn from krishna directly that is here correct or from a pure devotee of krishna where is that that is we can have gurus we have the sadhus and not from a non devotee upstart okay puffed up with academic education right so and earlier we saw the importance of shastra right we had the first session where we discussed art of authoritative quoting where we said we said miss shila prabhupad was saying that uh, anybody quoting from anything is not bona fide he should be speaking from shastra even krishna speaks he speaks from Bhag the shastra he is quoting this 13.5 bhagavad gita he was quoting right brahma sutra padaischava hetu madvire vinishchita krishna himself is telling from vedan vedan sutra so this is very very important point we have to consider that when we are hearing the hearing should be having quality okay so prabhupad always used to say hearing with the adjective bona fide how many of you heard raise your hand this word bona fide hearing how many of you heard from shila prabhupad or read in his books yeah only one devotee has raised hand okay okay bona fide hearing Hmm. Yes, Mukund Patil also. Okay. Hare Krishna. Yes. So bona fide hearing. So Shila Prabhupada would always say hearing is bona fide hearing. So actually nowadays, uh, what my observation is also, and I heard from senior devotees. So Kane Krishna Prabhu was speaking about this point, and he was saying actually nowadays in ISKCON, actually we see there is lot of hearing. It's not that we have we have stopped hearing, but what has reduced a lot is reading. reading has reduced correct okay in one sense we have not stopped reading devotees also read but what do they read not scriptures they may read something else like whatsapp messages and uh, something else whatever okay so reading i am not saying in that activity but i am saying reading books reading scriptures okay that book reading has stopped so what has happened because of that 
our devotees, the literacy has gone down. That's what Prabhuji was explaining, actually. The literacy level has gone down. So what is the meaning of that? That they are accepting anybody as authority. Anybody speaking on YouTube is our authority, like that they may feel. Or they think that any Baba or any uh, person is speaking, he is speaking the right philosophy. Why? Why this has happened? Because many times devotees don't know what is our philosophy because they may not have read the books. Okay? So if they are not reading the books, then what will happen? We will know what is the philosophy. And if we don't know what is philosophy, then we will think whatever other person speaks with a good background music that is very nice to hear is our philosophy. And that is good. No, that is not the case. So what here is saying, uh, Prabhupada is saying, is one should not hear from a non-devotee upstart. That's true. But even if we don't have people who are speaking from the Shastra, somebody is not speaking from the Shastra, he is just speaking whatever is coming to his mind, then that is also not very good to hear. Okay? And our authority or our speech or our lifestyle should be based on somebody who is speaking from Shastra. Okay, like you see Shiva Prabhupada's presentation. Now he has told the philosophy, he will give a quotation from the Shastra. This is from where? Second chapter of the first canto. He is giving a quotation here. So whenever Shiva Prabhupada will write his purports or speak, he will give quotations from the Shastra. He will not say that, oh, uh, this uh, certain Baba told like this, this uh, Maha, this person told, told like this, this Bua told like this. No, he will speak from Shastra. He will say, this Shastra speaks this, this Purana speaks like this, this Bhagavatam is quoted here. And then he will give the translations also and make us understand. So this is very, very important for us to as devotees to understand that so what is the source we are hearing from and even reading from Srila Prabhupada books. This is he it is hearing. It's like we are sitting at lotus feet of Prabhupada and hearing. What we are hearing? His own words, which La Prabhupada told is directly written by Krishna. Okay. So that's what I am focusing here. That quality hearing is very, very important. Otherwise, as devotees, we can just telling, oh, this Prabhuji said like this or that Prabhuji said like this, which will not be a very authentic way of understanding our philosophy. Okay. Okay, anybody has any question on this point? Any question, anything you want to ask? Mukund Padru? Oh, okay. I thought your hand is raised. Okay. Kishore Vyaspru, your hand is raised. You want to ask something? Uh, yeah. You can unmute. I was not able to hire. See, what I want to just know, see, uh, when we listen, correct now, so uh, uh, when we listen from a preacher, correct now, the listener may not be able to know what uh, what is the dilution of the quality, correct now. So from um, from Prabhupada to uh, up to certain level, like, there will be definitely a, a diminution or a dilution of the quality of the content, basically, correct now. But the listener would not be able to actually check unless he goes back and read to the Shastra and verify that basically. And every time it won't, it may not be possible, correct? Now. So how uh, that should be accounted for? Yeah, so actually this question is very common. So we have to do two things, Proji. One is that we should have knowledge. We cannot say that we don't know what he is speaking is right or wrong. Because as we read books, we understand what Shila Prabhupada speaks. And what he does not speak, we know. If we read his books. That is first thing. Second thing is we should see how that person is teaching. Is he just teaching? He takes one or two lines from Prabhupada and then speaks whatever he wants to speak, which is disconnected from Prabhupada and what Krishna is speaking. He is speaking something of his own story, his own interpretation, his own thinking. Is it like that? Or is he taking the Shastras word to word and he is taking the purports of Srila Prabhupada and then he is speaking and focusing on that? Is he trying to understand it, what Srila Prabhupada means here, according to what the previous Acharya has explained or what is his intelligence saying? Like I may not understand everything Prabhupada said. 
So I go back to Shla Prabhupada's previous acharya, where he has taken from. I can see, oh, Prabhupada is speaking this point from here, from Balde Vidya Bhushan or Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, and he is explaining this point here. So I can understand, and then I can speak in, in the discussion here. But somebody is thinking that his own intelligence is better than whatever he wants to understand Shila Prabhupada may mean here, then that kind of person we cannot hear. So anybody speaks anything, we have the rights and responsibilities actually. Uh, if I, yeah, here there is some space. So Prabhuji, you have two things which you can always exercise. One is your right, other one is your responsibility. So if you visit uh, any place, especially like recently I visited the hospital, so you can see these two things are mentioned there. So rights are mentioned of a patient. What are the rights of the patient? They have the right to discuss the, uh, the side effects of the medicine. They have the rights to discuss what procedure is going to be uh, followed in their case. Okay, They have the right to ask all the questions about medicine, all the questions about treatment. They have the right to ask. What are their responsibilities? Their responsibilities, they should openly speak what is the disease. They should openly speak what problems they are facing since when they are facing, what reservations they have. All this, they are, that is their responsibility. Similarly, while studying Shastra, also we have rights and responsibilities. So we have the right to ask the speaker, okay, what is the source, what is the reference he is speaking from? If we see that, okay, he's speaking, which is looking nice, but it doesn't seem that Srila Prabhupada speaks this, or it doesn't look like Srila Prabhupada has explained this, or it doesn't look like as per the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. How will we know? Only when we have read the books. Otherwise, we will not know. So we can ask the reference from where that person is speaking. We can see this Parikshit Maharaj is asking Shukdev Goswami. Okay, Shukdev Goswami doesn't say something, or he says, uh, okay, Jnana is best. Karma is best in sixth canto, he says. So what did Parikshit Maharaj told? Yes, yes, yes. Did he accept like that? No, he did not accept. Because Sukhdev Goswami has previously, previously explained Bhakti is best in third canto. Now Sukhdev Goswami is saying something else. Parikshit Maharaj is not agreeing to it. Ultimately, unless Sukhdev Goswami speaks Bhakti is best, he did not agree. So we can ask the reference and we feel something which is not coming as per the Krishna conscious philosophy explained by Prabhupada, we can ask the speaker. And we have some responsibilities also to respect the speaker, respectfully ask. We respectfully inquire. Okay. And Tadviddi Pranipatena Pariprashnena Sevaya. Correct. So that is the responsibility of the hearer. Okay. So you have some rights as a hearer and you have some responsibilities as a hear, hearer. Okay. And you have also the responsibility to hear from authentic person who speaks from Shastra. His speech is based on Shastra. This is your responsibility to check. So one example Srila Prabhupada gives that if you want to purchase diamond, first better you know what diamond is. So you have not read the books only. How will you know that what the person is speaking is the right philosophy or it's not our philosophy. So it is your responsibility to read the books and it is your right to ask what is the source of what you are speaking. Okay. So if you exercise this, then you can follow the path given in Shastra. Otherwise, you are following only that person and he will tell, have faith in me. I will take you back to Godhead. That may not be possible. Okay. So if that person is speaking from Shastra, then we have faith in Shastra because he is speaking from the Shastra. And why we have faith in that person? Because he speaks from Shastra. Not because he is just speaking. Okay. And we should try to hear more and more from our Guru Maharaj, from our uh, Siksha Guru, Premierant Siksha Guru, Srila Prabhupada, and hear more and more from these two places, actually. Not from just YouTube here and there. Because now YouTube, everything is available. So maximize your hearing from these two places, from your own as guru, which you are aspiring from or you have taken initiation from. And then second is Shla Prabhupada. Okay, I will suggest that is safe path. Okay, so anybody else has any? Does that answer, Prabhuji, your question? Okay, okay, okay. Yes, thank you. Anybody else has any point or any question, any comments? Otherwise, we'll go ahead. Please raise a hand. Yes, Ganga Putapu, yes. Please unmute yourself. Uh, Hare Krishna Puruji. 
yes please uh, nutshell uh, i understood what you were trying to say like uh, we need to be here from authorized source uh, from uh, day when you were emphasizing i am uh, yes, very, yes. very inspired by that i am very much inspired by that also yeah. bruji like uh, even if we take uh, there are many speakers or after shri prabhat many gurus are there everybody mm-hmm. emphasize uh, some uh, maharajas and sages or uh, they emphasize on siddhanta more and some of them are yeah. emphasize more on sadachar part even the shloka shloka may be the same the hmm. explanation part would be the different mm-hmm. so siddhanta somebody is emphasize more on siddhanta like shila prabhupad whenever he uh, speaks uh, even in half an hour class he has quote so many shlokas correct everywhere he gives difference but uh, and same a uh, followed by the shila prabhupad uh, disciples also like navyendra sam maharaj bhakti ka sam maharaj mm-hmm. they also like emphasize more on uh, siddhant part mm-hmm. but other side wish that many uh, yeah, no need to take names much no local take names yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. may yeah. may not be able to uh, like uh, quote but uh, sadachar is also uh, equally important in our krishna consciousness mm-hmm. so i'm little bit confused uh, how you are uh, saying like yeah sadachar is equally important so what is the question but they are so, speaking uh, shlokas in their class you are telling yeah yeah they are quoting shloka in, in the said uh, but but in other side uh, there are many uh, are there like they don't quote but sadachar part would, was emphasized more so you are saying okay. like uh, need to be uh, quoted shlokas uh, given references that we may not be able to find in other places no it's not that they will not speak any shlokas or anything and some of them may not be speaking the shloka but they will be speaking directly the translation if we have studied properly the shlokas and their translations we can ourselves identify oh actually this certain prabhu is speaking from this section but he is not quoting shloka but he is quoting from uh, this section but he is speaking only translation correct so when i say speaking shastra based on shastra shastra i don't mean that they should quote shlokas uh, to make them themselves authentic what i am saying is their teachings are based on shastra they may not be able to quote shloka as it is okay what i mean is they are basing their teaching on the shastra they are not giving their own interpretations on their own mental thoughts like that okay <clears throat> is that your question prabhu ji what i said does it answer <clears throat> or something else you are asking please unmute yourself ganga putra yeah yes bro yes bro ji yes bro ji it's okay bro ji yeah so i am no. not saying that they should quote shlokas only but their teaching should be based on shastra then it will have effect yeah okay arun prabhu yes you can ask to comment hari krishna yes bro so like uh, the thing which you explained to me like uh, cross checking the thing so is it for our uh, like in essence i have two question that is it for our understanding that whether they are speaking right uh, because at that point of time like we are we may not be uh, like uh, we may not have authority to judge so is it for our understanding that we can ask them from where are they quoting or mm. uh, and this is one, one question and second question is like when we put this thing in front of uh, let us say other uh, when we question we we'll take Roji. one question we'll take at a time okay so this is this was the yeah. question that is it for our understanding or uh, like if we don't understand some point so for our conviction we can we can have this clarity that from where it is it spoken yeah so general understanding is whatever the speaker speaks he is speaking the authoritative sources only but we are not able to understand or we don't know from where he is speaking so that is our general understanding we have faith in the speaker and they are speaking from authorities of shastra but if we are not able to identify from where he is speaking or we are feeling little off from the general krishna conscious philosophy then we can ask prabhu ji i am not able to understand so that's why i mentioned tad vidhi pranipatena pari prashna prashnena na sevaya the pari prashna how it should be i am not able to understand it from where you are speaking and what is the reference of that what is source of it if you can actually 
tell the source and what is the uh, reference of it. That way we can inquire. Okay, we can humbly ask. Okay, like that. So I am not saying that that you should doubt the speaker. We have faith in the speaker, but we can ask Prabhu that this I am not able to understand how it is matching with the philosophy given by Shila Prabhupada. If you can make me understand, we can ask like that. Yes, Prabhu. Is it okay? Mm. Yeah. Uh, Hare Krishna. Uh, yes, Prabhu. Thank you. Second question is like, uh, when we, uh, like while book distribution or if we discuss this philosophy to somebody else, outside people may say that, uh, yeah, like as we said, we should read Shastra. Um, you gave the example, the very apt example of diamond. That first we should know what diamond is. So similarly, mm -hmm. uh, many people say that you have, you have started following Scorn and Scorn mm -hmm. follows God So mm -hmm. you are, you have studied or, yeah, it's true that we have studied this philosophy because earlier, we were sentimental spiritualists, not spiritualists, sentimentalism we were following, as Chaitanya Prachan Prabhu says. So mm. now we understand philosophy after coming to SCON, we try to understand. This is the only philosophy that we studied. And now based on our faith, whatever faith we have gained, on that mm. we now we have full faith on Prabhupada. And now mm. we study this Prabhupada book. And at most, till now I have not studied any Acharya book, but then, then our Acharya's book. Now, if you present this philosophy to somebody else, they may say that you have not studied uh, Vedanta Sutra or you have not studied uh, Vedas, other Vedas. So now, uh, what to say? What to, what should be our argument in that case? So you are distributing book and they are asking like this, correct? In summary, you are and, saying. Yeah, and also and not just in book distribution. Like if uh, you have some, if you have conversation with our, our friends who are not following this point. Okay. So, yes. Yes. Because we are following Iskon, so they say that, okay, you are blindly following it. So okay. Is it based on our initial faith that we are following Iskon? Or mm. uh, how is it? See, so actually, as we have discussed uh, about Sukriti, this Sukriti, in the next purport it will come. This Sukriti, Prabhupada mentions as intelligence. Okay. In his purports. Next purpose, it is just going to come. Prabhupada will say that those who are devotees are most intelligent. Have you heard that? You muted yourself. Please don't mute yourself until unless we complete the answer. Uh, yes, Prabhupada, yeah, I have read it. Uh, heard, okay. And then Prabhupada also says those who are most intelligent will come to Bhakti Yoga. So Prabhupada is what he is speaking about. There is about the Sukriti factor, which is a factor for anyone to become a devotee. Okay, now your friends who are asking, they are not having this Sukriti. What is that Sukriti? Favorable impressions about the elements of Bhakti. Okay, towards Lord Krishna, towards the Bhagavad Gita, towards Srimad Bhagavatam. You have got Sukriti in previous lives, got good favorable impressions of honoring Prashadam, interacting with devotees, reading Bhagavad Gita. So some Sukriti either in previous life or this life you have received because of which you were attracted. Okay, and then now, now you started reading and you like it. It did not happen just suddenly. But your friends and the person whom you are distributing book may not have this Sukriti. Okay, if they don't have, they will not appreciate the Krishna conscious philosophy. They will not appreciate the prasadam. They will tell her, hey, this is same food. This is khichdi and this also khichdi. Both look same, both smell the same. How do you, what do you mean that this is offered to Krishna, this is not offered to Krishna? Both look same only. They will speak like that. They will say, Are this book, this book also is having same print, black and white. This book also has same print, black and white. So what, what is the difference? Both look same. They will speak like that. So the point is that you have got this Sukriti because of which you have got faith. And because of that faith, you are able to Understand that these are the essential things. So, Shraddha is defined as Shastra Artha Shraddha. Means the essential meaning of Shastra, whatever is there. On that you have faith. So, Bhagavad Gita is sense of the Shastra, right? So, you have faith in Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, all that. But they will not be able to put. Okay. So, what we should do to them, we should not try to refute them and defeat them. They may go away. So, 
what i would say is you give them good favorable impressions and give them good experience of bhakti give them nice prasadam give them nice kirtans have good interaction and dealing with them don't try to defeat them with philosophy they will not have good experience so how anybody comes to become a devotee is not by getting defeated and coming to bhakti okay that is very rare which chaitanya mahaprabhu could do <laughs> which is like he gives the kripa siddhi and if somebody can become devotee but we may not be able to do somebody we defeat he will go away give good experience then they get their sukriti then their faith increases they will get attracted that is the essence of this so i hope some part it answers your question yes sir okay so thank you so we'll go ahead in discussion otherwise we cannot complete okay you can who was reading prabhu i forgot mm. yeah arun prabhu you were reading correct na yeah 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 i unmuted you yeah yeah please continue so, last slide i will just go it, it was last slide yes. yeah this last line we had not discussed i think in the shrimad bhagavatam this process of understanding krishna the supreme personality of godhead the absolute truth is described in the second cha- chapter of the first canto as follows yes so what process he is describing as i told you earlier this whole section is actually describing about one thing what is that hearing correct so now for this importance of hearing shila prabhu is going to quote from shrimad bhagavatam so he has quoted this five shlokas we'll just read the translation yes to please read therefore only by hearing from krishna or from his devotee in krishna consciousness can one understand the science of krishna yeah. okay the translation is not here okay yeah this is the last line of the purport which is quoted yeah yeah basically the whole thing is saying in a sense that the first shloka is important here which said that shrinavatam correct so this word is actually shila propad is bringing here so hearing the swa katha means katha about the lord what happens and then again the word shravanam comes here so punya shravana so it gives lot of purification means the piety of spiritual nature okay not material piety spiritual nature of that piety okay so and then what happens hridi antastho whatever is seated inside the heart is abhadra that abhadra what happens it is destroyed okay so this is what propad is focusing here on that srinivatam swakatha krishna okay by that purification happens and then he explains all that pre the stages of asakti then there is ruchi then there is asakti then bhava and then prema all that arises later okay and finally one sees the lord so that is explained in this whole thing but starts from where shrinavatam this is explained yeah we will go to the second shloka yeah so here is saying gyanam te aham sa vigyanam idam vakshyami asheshatah yad gyatva neha bhuyo anyat gyatavyam avashishyate okay i will explain to you asheshita te aham vakshami okay what what i will speak knowledge of my powers so remember this is called gyana and what along with knowledge of my sweetness this is called vigyana okay knowing which yad gyatva nothing else remains to be known anyat gyatavyam na yah bhuyo avashishyate avashishya means to remain okay so nothing else will will be remaining to for you to know so again here krishna is speaking about two things what are the two things gyana and vigyana so these two things one who knows for him there is nothing more to be known and what are those two terms gyana is about the 
material knowledge vigyana is about the spiritual knowledge okay so that is the essential meaning of this verse that krishna is going to explain these two so these will be the contents of this chapter also ahead so gyana we can see it will immediately start from the shloka number 4 onwards okay 4 onwards it will start and vigyana he will speak later okay so four onwards he'll start speaking this jnana part material okay not actually the material part only but the tat tatastha shakti also okay tatastha plus material both okay that is jnana vigyan is completely spiritual means chit chit shakti okay let's read the purport it will be more clear okay somebody else want to read they can read who has not got opportunity okay prasanna gopal pro would you like to read the purport okay i'll unmute you yeah please read approach i'm at the public place to to the noise oh okay okay okay, okay. mukund pas bro Yes, Roji. Yeah, would you like to read the purport? Okay, very well, sure. The Lord, the Lord teaches the knowledge. <clears throat> the Lord teaches the knowledge that He is about to explain. Nyana concerns the Swarupa of Swarupa of the Lord relating to His spiritual and material energies, Jiva and material prakriti. I will speak or teach this knowledge in fullness. Asheshataha, along with Vidyana knowledge of my Swarupa, apart from those energies to you who are surrendered. Note this hmm. indicates his form. Okay, but should I stop or? No, no, complete, complete. Note this uh, indicates his form, his form and pastimes not related to material creation, the form and pastimes in the spiritual world. Spiritual. correct yeah so basically this is commentary of baldev vidya bhushan so he is in succinct form he is saying what is the gyana and what is vigyana okay so gyana he says two things one is the jiva knowledge about the jiva and material prakriti okay so this we also call as bahiranga shakti correct we heard about this and jiva we also call as tatastha shakti okay so these two comprise gyana part okay so this is spiritual is about jiva only okay not the spiritual world okay and then he saying i will speak or teach this knowledge in fullness along with vigyana so he is separating this vigyana this is knowledge of my swarupa so this is antaranga shakti so prabhupada is going to explain this ओके दिस अंतरंगा शक्ति और वी से चित शक्ति करेक्ट अपार्ट फ्रॉम दोज एनर्जीज विच दोज एनर्जीज मीन्स वॉट विच वेर एक्सप्लेन अर्लियर ज्ञान ओके टू यू वर सरेंडर्ड ओके यस लू प्लीज कंटिन्यू या मुकुंद पात्रो ओके प्लीज डोंट म्यूट युअर सेल्फ Yeah. Understanding this knowledge, which I have promised to speak, knowledge of both of these topics concerning my Swarupa, the cause of everything, which should be the object of your meditation, nothing else will remain to be known by you, who are in who are inquisitive about and absorb in the highest path, since everything else is included in this knowledge. Yeah. So this is again speaking about the samagram. first shloka right he told about samagram you will know everything correct samagram so here he is saying the object of your meditation is lord he is speaking about himself correct so he is speaking about his swarupa knowing this 
everything will be known. That is samagram. Nothing else will remain to be known. Yeah, Shri Prabhupada is speaking now. Yes, bro, please continue. Shri Prabhupada's purport. Complete knowledge includes knowledge of the phenomenal world, the spirit mm -hmm. behind it, and the source both of them. This is transcendental knowledge. The Lord wants to explain the above mentioned system of knowledge because Arjuna is Krishna. Arjuna is Krishna's confidential devotee and friend. Mm -hmm. In the beginning of the fourth chapter, this explanation was given by the Lord, and it is again confirmed here. Complete knowledge can be achieved only by the devotee of the Lord in disciplic succession directly from the Lord. Yeah, in the fourth chapter also, as we discussed, transcendental knowledge was given. So for two reasons, he is confidential devotee. Bhakto Sime Sakhacha Iti. Okay, both. And as we discussed uh, this earlier, MSC, matter, spirit, and the controller, or you can say the source of both. Correct. That includes what? Uh, sorry, that comprises what? Samagram. Correct. We discussed in first purport. Okay, knowledge of phenomenal world. So, phenomenal world is the matter. The spirit behind, correct? That is actually not the Lord himself, but the Paramatma feature he is speaking here. Okay? That is Paramatma feature he is telling. He is not telling about his Swarupa of Krishna form. Paramatma feature. Who is the spirit behind? That is Paramatma. And how many Paramatmas are there? How many Paramatmas are there? Okay, somebody wants to answer, can raise hand. Arun Prabhu, okay. Yes, bro. Like one one Paramatma in all the in all the heart of living beings, like heart of mm -hmm. all living beings. Correct. The same Paramatma is there, but individually he is present in all the living beings. Okay, this is one Paramatma. Okay. Any more we have? Okay, Prerna Mataji. Please unmute yourself. Not able to hear you, Mataji. Okay. Yamuna Vilas Pro. Uh Pruji, uh like uh, a spiritual master guru is also chaitya guru we call it right external yes yes of a spiritual uh, external manifestation ah, of paramatma paramatma correct external manifestation yeah but technically i'm talking about paramatma itself okay somebody else also this proper talks about in first canto itself but here it is important that's why i'm bringing out okay paramatma there are three, okay, three Paramatmas are there. First one is the Shirodakshai Vishnu, correct, which is there in everyone's heart, as Arun Prabhu told. Then there is Garbodakshai Vishnu, who is Paramatma of the universe. Okay, for every universe, he is the Paramatma. Okay, and when he enters the universe, only the universe gets activated. And then, who is the third one? Can anybody guess? Karun who is remaining? Yes, yes, Karuno Dakshai Vishnu. And who is he? Paramatma of he is Paramatma of the whole material creation. Okay, so we have like this three Paramatmas. So whole material world is actually activated because of the presence of these three. <clears throat> That's why he is saying the spirit behind this whole phenomenal world are the three Vishnus. How do we know? Prabhupada is going to quote this in the fourth shloka parpat. Okay, Vishnosti, Vishnostu Trini Rupani. Okay. So he is going to quote in 7.4 per part. Okay. So from mm -hmm. there, I'm speaking this. Okay. Yes. Please uh, read ahead. 
mukund patto i mean still i am on uh, same slide can i read from book ah yeah you can read from book yeah. okay so therefore one should be intelligent enough to know the source of all knowledge all knowledge uh, who is the cause of all causes and the only only object of our meditation in all types of yoga practice when the cause of all causes becomes known then everything knowable becomes known and nothing remains unknown the vedas mukunda upanishad 1.3 says mundaka upanishad this is called mundaka upanishad mundaka upanishad 1.3 says kasmin yu bhagavo bhagavo vidyate sarvam idam vidyatam bhavatiti ha yes so what is the meaning of that it's not quoted here oh, yeah that quoted before and yeah meaning is here only yeah so what are you saying when the cause of all causes becomes known then everything knowable becomes known and nothing remains to be unknown so does this mean that when one becomes a devotee he knows krishna okay mam vetti tatvata as he says okay or as in this shloka he is saying that yad gyatva neha bhu anyat gyatva avashishyate nothing else will remain to be known so does it mean that devotee will know everything like how many molecules are there in the sand beach how many hairs are there on the hair does it mean like that he knows everything no it doesn't mean that what it means is that what is essentially required for practicing devotional service is known to him and what is essentially required to go back to godhead is known to him as a devotee what is that he has the sambandh gyan and he has the abhideya gyan and he has the prayojana gyan okay that much he has not that every molecule of this uh, world he will know every atom of the beach he will know no not like that okay yes okay anybody has any comments any questions on the second shloka what we discussed okay so here krishna explained gyana and vigyana he is going to tell now after which nothing else will be remaining let's go to third shloka okay मनुष्या सहस्रेशु कशिद यतति सिद्ध यतताम सिद्धा कशिन मं वेति तत्व अमंग थाउजेंड्स ऑफ मेन मनुष्या सहस्रेशु सो हियर दिस वर्ड सहस्रेशु मींस थाउजेंड्स नॉट वन थाउजेंड मेनी थाउजेंड्स समटाइम्स डिवोटेड इंटरप्रेटर्स वन थाउजेंड नो दिस इज मेनी थाउजेंड्स some attain success in their endeavors kashchid yatati siddhaye among those who attain success yatam api siddhanam hardly anyone knows me kashchin mam veti tatvata yeah yeah please read the translation on purport yeah who would like to read who has not spoken okay madhavari nam bro hari krishna Are you available, bro, to read? I'll just unmute you. Yes, bro. Hare Krishna. Very happy to see you, bro. Hare Krishna. Yes, bro. Would you like to read Prabhupada's uh, translation and purport? Do you have yes, with you Prabhupada's translation? Uh, yes, yes, bro. Yeah. Chapter. Yeah, seven point three. Hello, yes, sir. Uh, out of many thousands among men, one may endeavor for perfection, and of those who have achieved perfection, hardly one knows me in truth. Yes. Yeah. Part, part so, just one minute. Ah, uh. here actually. three things are mentioned one is among all the human beings okay then second is siddhaye means those who aspire for siddhi siddhi in the sense propadi using the word perfection 
Okay, if you see the translation, Prabhupada is using the word perfection. And then Siddhana is a third level who are perfected. Okay. What that means is he has got liberation. Okay. He has got liberation. Kashin Maam Veti Tattvataha is fourth person. Among all those perfected, only few will know about me as it is. That is a Krishna conscious person, a devotee. So, this is a rarity. This is speaking about the rarity of what? What is a shloka going on? First shloka, second shloka is speaking about what concept? Okay, somebody can answer raising their hand. Arun Prabhu is answering always. Somebody else who has not answered. What is going on? First shloka, second shloka, what concept is going on now? What is Krishna speaking? Okay, Aruna Mataji is there. Would you like to speak? Okay, so many hands came up. Okay, okay. Yeah, present Gopal. Oh, yes, yes. Actually, I'm, I'm not looking well today. That is why I kept my video. Okay, okay. So. No problem. Can I? No problem. Yes, yes. Present Gopal. Uh, rarity of uh, understanding knowledge about Krishna. Yes, uh, yes, yes. We can yes. become realized about that knowledge. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, this is about rarity of knowledge about Krishna. Okay, which kind of knowledge? Complete knowledge or full knowledge. What that includes? Jnana, Vijnana. This rare being spoken. Okay, so please understand the context of this verse. We quote this verse so many times, oh, how much rare is what not so many things. But understand what Krishna is speaking in context of. He is speaking knowledge. What kind of knowledge? Complete knowledge. That knowledge is very rare. So this is a context we should speak this shloka in, not just how we want to use it. Okay, yes. So please read the trans, uh, commentary, Shri Prabhupada's purport. Yeah. Okay, sorry, you got unmuted. Huh? Muted. Who was reading? A person, Gopal Prabhu. No, no, I'm not reading. Just, uh, I'm not reading. Just uh, this Lopai generally referred uh, to. We'll come to the question, Prabhuji. We'll just okay. complete the. Purport. We'll come to discussion. Generally, yes. we'll take discussion after the purport. Okay. Yes. Yes. I, I'm, I'm just. Yes, Prabhuji. Okay, we can read uh, the translation. And uh, okay, yes, Mukun. Sorry, Madhav Harinam Prabhu. Yeah, Madhav Harinam. Please read, Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhuji. There are various grades of men, and out of many thousands, one may be sufficiently interested in transcendental realization to try to know what is the self. What is the body and what is the absolute truth? Yes. So what is Prabhupada speaking about here? Somebody tries to know what is the self. Which point Prabhupada is speaking about in this? So whoever wants to answer, please raise your hand. Which part of the shloka is Prabhupada speaking about here? I told you four things here, right? Manushya Nam Sahasrisu, first, second is Siddhaye, wanting to attain perfection, third is perfected person, fourth is one who is Vetti Tattvata, knows actually what he is. Which part Prabhupada is speaking about? First line, obviously, Manushanam Sahasreshu. Okay, among many thousands. Yes, okay, somebody raised hand. Yeah, Yamuna Vilas Prabhu. Uh, Vetti Tattvata, Prabhu. No, not Vetti Tattvata. That will come later. Okay, Arun Prabhu. Krishna is like it, it is referring to one may endeavor for perfection. That mm. uh, 
यदति कश्चिद यदति ये नो 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 इट मींस यू कैन टेल इन इंग्लिश या लाइक वन वन एंडेवर इट इज रेफरिंग टू वन एंडेवर फॉर परफेक्शन दोस हु आर ट्राइंग टू एंडेवर्स फॉर सक्सेस या कश्चिद यदति सिद्ध है या वन हु एंडेवर्स फॉर परफेक्शन सो ही इज endeavoring for perfection he is the second okay various grades of man is first na manushya naam sahasreshu so many grades of man are there in that only few are going for perfection you heard this word uh, called uh, brahma jigyasa correct all of us heard this word brahma jigyasa correct so this is about that brahma jigyasa yes bro please continue madhavre generally mankind is simply engaged in the animal propensities namely eating sleeping defending and mating and hardly anyone is interested in transcendental knowledge mm. yes bro continue the first six chapters of the gita are meant for those who are interested in transcendental knowledge in understanding the self the super self and the process of realization by gyana yoga hana yoga and discrimination of self from matter mm, yes so here again proper is speaking about this people who are siddhaye wants perfection they have understood in their life that something higher is to be achieved but they are doing it through different processes they know that i have to link with god yoga but they don't know what is the bhakti yoga path they are doing through dhyan yoga gyan yoga karma yoga these are all people who are in the category of siddha yes bro please continue however krishna can be known only by persons who are in krishna yeah so now propadi is telling about vetti tatvata correct who can know him as it is yes bro please continue other transcendentalist me achieve in personal brahman realize hmm. but this is easier than understanding krishna hmm. krishna is the supreme person but at the same time he is beyond the knowledge of brahman and parman the yogis and gyanis are confused in their attempts to understand krishna although the greatest of the impersonalist Sri Bhaskar Acharya has admitted in his Gita commentary that Krishna is the supreme personality of God. His followers do not accept Krishna as such, for it is very difficult to understand to know Krishna, even though one has transcendental realization of him personally. Yeah, so very important to note, Sankar Acharya has admitted in his Gita commentary that Krishna is the supreme personality of God. okay so shankaracharya has accepted so shankaracharya is actually a personalist correct right? because he is whose incarnation lord shiva yeah lord shiva he has come correct right? so he is a personalist but problem is where his followers are impersonalists and they have given miss inter interpretation they have done misinterpretation not shankaracharya okay so sometime other some other time we'll discuss about that yeah yes bro please come krishna is supreme personality of god the cause of all causes the primeval lord govinda hm swaraha paramaha krishna sachidananda vigraha anadir arir govinda sarva karana karan it is it is very difficult for the non devotees to know him although non devotees declare that the path of bhakti or devotional service is very easy they cannot practice it if the path of bhakti is so easy as the non devotee class of men proclaim then why do they take up the difficult path actually the path of bhakti is not easy yeah so in bhakti generally You must have heard also outside people say, "Hey, आप लोगों के ऐसे भावना है, सिर्फ emotions है, भक्ति इतना कुछ नहीं है, बस थोड़ा खाना पीना है, थोड़ा नहीं, ज़्यादा ही खाते, 
ज्यादा ही खाना पीना है और नाचना गाना है ये सब करते हैं इट्स वेरी इजी एक्चुअली सो प्रोपाजी सिंह इफ इट इज सो वाई यू ऑल्सो डोंट कम एंड डू दिस सो एक्चुअली वन ऑफ द माई फ्रेंड्स वॉज देर ही वॉज सिंग अरे वॉट यू डू इन द होल डे एक्चुअली जस्ट डूइंग समथिंग भगवत गीता टीचिंग एंड सम सर्विस होल डे यू आर वॉट यू आर डूइंग आई एम नॉट अंडरस्टैंडिंग सो टू थ्री टाइम्स यू टोल्ड सो आई टोल्ड यू ओके यू कम एंड विजिट वी विल सी हाउ यू लाइक दिस सो ही केम एंड ही वॉन्टेड टू अटेंड मॉर्निंग प्रोग्राम सो वन डे ही अटेंडेड मॉर्निंग फोर थर्टी टू नाइन थर्टी ही अटेंडेड then after that some service he did in the day next day he was feeling whole day so tired because he got up early so there was a hangout hangout or what they say i don't know is hangover hangover huh? hangover was there whole headache was there and then next day he could not get up so and then when i told about no onion garlic and so many things are there rules and regulations so they are actually shocked that you all are following so many rules and regulations actually yeah so actually it's not easy it seems like yeah yeah so mm-hmm. we'll just complete this part but yes bro please the so called path of bhakti practiced by unauthorized persons without knowledge of bhakti may be easy but when it is practiced actually according to the rules and regulations the speculative scholars and philosophers all away from yeah read the translation कृति स्मृति पुराणादि पंचरात्रि विधि में ना आत्या एकांतिक हरेर भक्ति उत्पात एव कल्पते रीड द ट्रांसलेशन गोस्ट ऑफ सर्विस ऑफ द लॉर्ड दैट इग्नोर्स द अथराइज्ड बेसिक लिटरेचर्स लाइक द उपनिषद पुराणा एंड नारद पंचरात्र इज सिंपली एन अननेसेसरी डिस्टरबेंस इन सोसाइटी या सो दोस पीपल हु से दैट ओके इट्स वेरी वेरी इजी व्हाई दे आर सेइंग इट इज वेरी इजी बिकॉज़ देयर आर saying that it is on mental platform we will just do whatever comes to our mind today one round tomorrow seven round tomorrow 16 round then zero then it is very easy but according to rules and regulations it is not easy so just we will extend 2 3 minutes we will just complete this for but yeah yes bro it is it is not possible for the brahman realized impersonalist or the parmatma realized yogi to understand krishna the supreme mm. person at god सर्विस one cannot know krishna as he is tatpat mm. even yes. though one is a great scholar of philosophy so from here onwards propad actually started explaining the tatvata part okay so he told that to understand krishna as the son of mother yashoda this is tatvata and that is very very sudurlabha very rare that understanding is very rare somebody can tell oh yeah krishna is brahman krishna is parmatma no we are not talking about that we are talking about this uh, the son of Man- mother yashoda or sham sundar krishna yes bro ji only the pure devotees can know something of the inconceivable transcendental qualities in krishna mm-hmm. he is being the cause of all causes he is omnipotence and opulence and his wealth fame strength beauty knowledge and renunciation because mm-hmm. krishna is benevolently inclined to his devotees yes. he is the last word in the brahman realize and the devotees alone can realize him as he is therefore it is said adarsi krishna namadi na bhavit karahe mundhe sevan mukhe jivat swayam eva pratyara satyam satyam madhari sevan tibhi no one can understand krishna as he is by the blunt material senses but he reveals himself to the devotees being pleased with them for their transcendental love and service unto him yes. okay so let's start here propas is quoting this shloka that how blunt senses are not the appropriate ones which we can 
which we can give us the knowledge of Krishna. Okay, but it should be having Krishna consciousness, <clears throat> then we can understand Krishna. So we will pause here. Next time we will start next section. That is knowing Krishna's material and his spiritual energies. That is fourth to twelfth. Tomorrow we will discuss this. Okay. So how Krishna is explaining his energies in material and spiritual realm. Okay. So thank you very much for joining. So we will not be able to take question and answer on this shloka now. We will start with question and answer tomorrow. If you have any questions, we can take tomorrow. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. So there was one announcement also. Okay. Few devotees are already dropped out. Yeah, actually, one announcement is there. We wanted to have a devotee who can do the recordings instead of Yamuna Vilas Prabhu and also take attendance. And we were thinking to have the attendance uh, at the end of the session itself. Otherwise, it becomes piled up, piled up, and then it becomes uh, big. Correct, Yamuna Vilas Prabhu? That's what you were expressing also. That. Uh, yes, Proji. Recording I can manage, Proji. And also, as you said, that you know we can uh, link it to the cloud system. Cloud, yes, yes. Yeah, so I'll just check with Yeah, and it can be sorted out. Uh, yes, regarding yes. attendance, I have requested my wife, uh, Suvida, to, so, yeah, to manage. So, yes. we'll see how it goes. Uh, we'll manage. Yes. And if it's, I mean, if we are not able to manage, then I will let you know. As of now, uh, we are coordinating, like me and my wife. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pru. Actually, we all are very thankful that I think you are very, very busy on weekends, especially because you are in UK. In India, we have so many devotees. <laughs> Especially in Pune, we have so many, you know. So, but in there, we are very scant full of devotees, actually. Thank you very much, first of all, joining this. Second thing is taking that responsibility. Taking responsibility of reading as well as serving. We are very grateful. But I was just thinking we can do the re uh, attendance part at the end of the session so that it doesn't pile up. And we can see also who all are present, actually. And Mark. Okay. So, yes, yes. videos are on and videos are on. And then we have devotees also. So, uh, hope devotees will be there till the end and then we can mark. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Mataji. Also, Vida Mataji, for taking the responsibility and being better half of Yabuna Vilas Pro. <laughs> okay, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, all devotees, for joining. So, I hope everybody is going to have very auspicious Govardhan Puja already had, we had, and then decorations and darshan you will have. So, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. So, tomorrow we will meet. Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai.